Matt plummets through the air. He's certain his life is over. Thirty-three-year-old Englishman Matt Briggs has started a new life on the other side of the world, in New Zealand. Recently divorced, he's ended up running the store he bought with his ex-wife. A year of separation and divorce process behind me at this stage and, and much more ahead, so it was, uh, it, it was a, a tough time, yes. But in his heart, Matt is no shopkeeper. Trapped with a business he can't sell, Hiking in the wilderness is a welcome relief from the daily grind. Since Matt's divorce, his constant companion has been Little Dog, or LD. Always oh, close to Little Dog, or LD. We spend every day together. Ready for a walk? Good boy. Matt's expedition will take him through remote mountain passes to the high-altitude ice plateaus of Mount Cook. New Zealand's highest peak. It's just sheer rock walls, glaciers and water, and that, that's all that's there. And... But after three days of battling to get above the tree line, Matt now finds himself in even tougher and more hazardous terrain. It's a very, uh, very steep and hard to find sort of place where you are taking care with every single step you take. You do not want him to put a single foot out of place. Finally, at 1,600 metres up, Matt gets his first glimpse of his goal. The distant ice plateaus of Mount Cook and temperatures at this altitude can fall dramatically. Matt knows he must start heading for the valley below and find shelter. And past, you know, what felt like the most dangerous part of the trip. Heading downhill is a relief, though not without hazards. And Matt picks his route carefully. There's a, a rocky uh, gully. Um, down, down below where I'm walking um, with just sheer cliff walls and solid upturned rocks uh, along its base. I was looking down at the valley floor um, and, uh, and really, yeah, not thinking too hard about, about where I was going. But these mountains don't forgive the careless. myself sliding down the hillside on, on my back, trying to dig my feet in, trying to dig my arms in, and think, yeah, well, we'll stop soon. Realisation dawns that I'm not slowing down. Ah! But I'm actually picking up speed. And then I realise that there's a cliff coming up. I'm not going to stop before I go over that. With nothing to grab onto and no one to help him, Matt's momentum is about to plunge him into the void. I did not expect to be alive when I hit the bottom. As Matt plummets through the air, he's certain his life is over. It felt like a very long time in the air uh, between the top of that cliff and the bottom. In that time, an amazing amount of thoughts go through your head. It felt like an eternity. I don't remember the sensation of the impact. What I do remember most clearly is the thought, I'm still alive. It really was absolute surprise. <sighs> Nothing felt too bad. Matt experiences a wave of relief. It seems he's had a miraculous escape. Oh. 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 Ah. 
but his adrenaline-soaked body is deceiving him. His wrist is smashed. Where there used to be a straight wrist, there's now an inch dog's leg, and it does, doesn't look good at all. And Matt's moment of horror doesn't end there. His ankle joint is pulverized. His tibia appears to be disconnected from his foot. I'll do. You can see the main uh, bone from my leg trying to come out through the uh, skin on the side of my ankle. Ah. Ah. It is pretty excruciating pain, the sort that gets into your, into, into your gut and you actually feel physically sick. There was obviously another serious injury somewhere, and I, I'm losing a lot of blood. I might not have very long left here. Matt needs to find out where all the blood is coming from before he loses consciousness. I start looking around. about 10 minutes to stop the bleeding, and it was a, a terrifying 10 minutes. Then he suddenly remembers. He has a distress beacon. When activated, it uses satellites to alert rescue services and pinpoint his location. I'm thinking, well, all I've got to do here is get that beacon activated, and there'll be people here within, within a couple of hours. The weather's clear, the choppers can fly, so I, I'm going to get out of here. But Matt's search through his rucksack yields nothing, and he can't see the beacon anywhere around him. <sighs> and it slowly begins to dawn on me that this locator beacon isn't here. I haven't got it with me. I'm in big trouble. He's left it on a shelf back at the shop. Matt's usually meticulous preparation has deserted him in his hour of need. Any hope of raising the alarm is now gone. 